gotta live back in a bit, meditate, I think I should. No, we ain't friends, got me on. What's going on, guys? It's Bryce from Fitz Records, and I'm back with another video. In today's video, I am starting a new series on the channel called Monthly Music Highlights, and I'm gonna be going over all the music that dropped from the last month that I've been listening to a lot, that I've saved, that I've been tapping into, that's been on repeat. So this is replacing the New Music Friday series that I had going on every week because I was doing that every single week. And I'm gonna just keep it real, it was flopping. Y'all were not watching it, y'all Y'all did not care, and I did this for months. So, we're gonna start this new series here. We gonna hope it's gonna do a little bit better. We gonna hope you gonna like it a little bit more than he did New Music Friday. But, without further ado, let's just get right into it. Starting with the projects I checked out here. This first one is by Slump Sixes. It is called Forgive Never Forget. Now, this is a little EP type mixtape thing, and it's hard. There are some hard songs on here. He's, I will say Slump Six is diverse in this project. He has a few little more, I don't want to say singing, but more like plug and be tracks. But he has some of these hard tracks, and these harder tracks are the ones I liked, and I really like them because he's very unique. He's on the come up, he's underground, you know. Go fuck with this. If you're into that type of scene, you know, I can almost guarantee you're going to enjoy this project. This next little EP we got here is from Logic and C. Castro, Half Breed, the 3 PEP. Now, just looking at this right here, come on. It's only three tracks, there's a few tracks, but I needed to mention it because this has been a fucking repeat the entire month for me. You get three completely different sides of Logic and Castro on this. You get Vroom Vroom, which is the trap, Slapper, you know what I'm saying? That's what she said, which is the guitar, the melodic, the acoustic, soothing track. And then you get Game 6, which is the raw, hip-hop, lyrical shit. It's in your face, interesting hook. And it's just great. This is pretty much a great showcase of Logic's versatility and Castro's versatility as we know there is a full album coming soon and Castro has an album coming out soon so we gonna be on the lookout for that. This next project I checked out was a collaboration tape between Currency and Jermaine, du and Jermaine Dupri called For Motivational Use Only Volume 1. Now I guess I'm just really liking the EPs this month because it's another EP and it's just smooth. I mean Currency drops all the time but you know what Jermaine Dupri those, they just mesh together so well. We got features here from 2 Chains and T.I., both trap legends, who are being put on this more low-key kind of stoner track type beats, and it's just, they, they snap. They both had incredible verses on this throughout. I mean, I as you can see, I liked every track on here. The only reason Essence Fest is not liked is because I liked the single version, because that was a single, so I've liked this entire EP. It was all slapping. Ran this one back a lot. If you're into that, you know, currency type shit, check it out. I can guarantee you're gonna enjoy it. Now, this next little project, which is kind of another EP mixtape, uh, Grails by Pierre Bourne. Now, this was a collection of leaks, snippets, songs that fans had been pretty much begging for, asking Pierre Bourne to drop, and he came through on this Grails tape and dropped them. Now, I didn't like every single song in here. I did like Honeyberry 2. It was a single, so that's why it's not liked on here. Um, and IG, I like that one too. But the rest I liked, so there's only, what, two songs in here I wasn't really feeling out of the eight. But these songs are just so catchy, man. Pierre, I, I get it, bruh. If you don't like Pierre, just keep listening to him over and over and over, and eventually you'll like him. I'm not even, like, a huge Pierre fan. I kind of was a hater for a while, but now I'm seeing the vision because he is catchy. He be saying the funniest shit. He has a sense of humor. He doesn't take himself too seriously, and I'm, you know the production's going to be on point with Pierre. Of course. I mean, at the very least, you can guarantee production is going to, mm. So that's why this is on here. If you're into Pierre, you pretty much know what to expect, but I, I, I check this out. I, I definitely check this out. Next project here from Redville called Playing With Fire. It's another little EP. I, I guess April is just the month for EPs, but this shit was hard. This shit was hard, and like I've been saying, it, get back in black enough. I didn't like them because they were singles, and I already had them liked on my shit. Shit was fire. I was definitely fucking with it. Fucks to give. It's so hard. Every song is catchy. These songs are unique from another, and despite it being an EP, it kind of plays out like an album, I feel like. Like, if you play it in order, there's progression in this. It's not just track slapped together. It's it's some it's some real fucking art here. Shout out Redville. On the come up. Been on the come up for a minute. We love Redville over here, so definitely check that out if you're into that kind of more singing, melodic, but also aggressive and distorted music. I mean, he, he does it all. This next project I have here is from my homie, Del Nelson, and it's called Charlotte's Unfortunate Death. Now, this EP is great. Del Nelson's been, you know, kind of making a little bit of waves, you know, 
releasing songs here and there for a little bit of over a year, I believe, at this point. And this EP was pretty much a collection of all those singles with a few new tracks in here. As you can see here, Drinks, P's and Q's, Messiah's Prince, and Life is Death were all singles that I've had liked before. That's why they're not liked in here. And Reparations, even. Reparations was also a single now that I'm looking at it. So we did get a few new tracks, but if you haven't been keeping up with Del Nelson, like I'm sure a lot of you guys have in here, as you can see, he's a very underground artist. Definitely, definitely check this out. He's extremely lyrical. He is extremely substantive. Talks about some real shit that goes on in his real life. He's expressing his pain, you know, talking about his insecurities, his life. And I would definitely, definitely check this out. Especially if you're, I know I got a lot of Logic fans in here. If you're in here for Logic stuff, check this out, bro. You will love it. I promise you will love it. This guy is super fucking talented. Check this out. The next project here, you guys saw it coming. Homicide Gang, Snot or Not. Now, I actually really enjoyed this. I think their last album was a little bit better. There wasn't a crazy amount of artistic progression in this. It was more of just like a little collection of songs to get out there. A little 12 track little project. But it was hard. I can't lie. I mean, snot shit, so hard. Uzi work, mmm. Two to face is two to face is like super unique. It's like smooth. It is not really what Homicide Gang has been doing. But wow, it's good. Block work is fucking hard and in your face. I mean, what else, what else is there to say about Homicide Gang? If you like Homicide Gang, that opium aesthetic, check it out. You gonna fuck with it. You, you're just gonna fuck with it. So, that's that. And even if you don't, maybe check it out. He's They're, they're more aggressive on the Rage Beats, kind of doing their street rapping style. It's definitely unique. It's definitely interesting. So, I would check that out. And the final project that I listened to a lot this month so far, it's only been out for a little bit, but it's still on repeat, is Jack Harlow's Jack Man. Now, wow. Jack Carlo proved us wrong. I'm not gonna lie, Jack Carlo proved us wrong. Now, I liked almost every song in here. It, it's like, he's talking about some real shit on here. You know, he's going the lyrical path, you know, showing his art and a lot of the samples on here, the beat selection, the subject matter, just everything about this. Jack Carlo did his thing. He, he really did. He has some nice substance tracks in here. Some tracks, some interesting content. But regardless, they got me to think, they got me engaged, and they got me interested to hear more. And that sounds like a good project to me, okay? That sounds like a good project to me. Real excited how Jack Harlow will go with his next project, as this was pretty much just like a little 10-song little project, a little bit of a predecessor to show people that, hey, he's still him. So now that now that he proved himself, he can come in with a more mainstream approach album like he did with his last one and maybe get some more deserved respect, okay? Maybe we'll give him some more deserved respect. But I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard this already, but if you haven't, you are sleeping. I'm gonna keep it real. I didn't really like Jack Carlo's album before this at all. You're sleeping if you haven't heard this, so check that out. But as far as the projects, that's all I had listed here. That's all I was really, really bumping this month. Of course, I listened to a lot of other projects, but those were my favorite ones. So we gonna get into the singles, and I'm kinda gonna just fly through these. I don't wanna take up too much time because a lot of these you probably heard, a lot of them probably speak for themselves. But let's get right into it. Drake Search and Rescue. Hard. Benny X production, Lil Yachty production, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of a longer track, nice progression. It's dark, it's nice. It's it's a good track. You know, I saw hate for it and shit, but I think it's a good track. Next here we got K and M A Forever featuring Pharrell Williams. Now wow, it is upbeat, it makes me happy, it gets me excited for their collaboration album, which is dropping very soon. Next, we have Lil Yachty Strike Holster. Now, this is coming off of Lil Yachty's last album, which is very psychedelic rock, experimental, influenced. And this brings back a little bit more of like his traditional production style, but he's still doing that crazy voice thing. He's still going within a similar path. So I think this is the progression of Lil Yachty from that album. Really excited to see what comes after this. Next here, we have Lonesome from East Bay Tay. Now, this guy's underground, but he's hard, dude. He's hard. Check this out if you're into that underground rap shit. A little melodic, but it's aggressive. It's in your face. He's a beautiful voice. And that beat just, it just makes you, bro. It makes you feel like him. It just does. Next track here, we got Icy Twat, Feel Like Pat. Now, been an Icy Twat fan for a very, very, very long time, and Icy Twat's legendary in the scene. If you know anything about Icy Twat, you know that he is the pioneer of this shit. Feel Like Pat is incredible. You know, it's pretty much the same kind of Icy Twat sound he's been doing for years and years, but progressing on it a little bit. But what I really liked was this next track from a Thought Twat called Fed Up, which is, if you don't know, the duo between Thoughto and Icy Twat, their side to ASAP Rocky's AUG label. And this is a progression. This is like almost, I don't want to say in a pop direction, but it's like upbeat. It's definitely not that hard rap, that fucking like spitting shit that they usually do, that aggressive shit. But it's a, it's a progression and it still takes influences from their like 
choppy flow, their choppy instrumentals, their kind of vibey, spacey, cloudy sounds, and I was fucking with that a lot. Next, we got Dro Kenji Arsonist. This is melodic. It reminded me a little bit of Juice World, not gonna lie, but it's really good. It's really good. It's it's hard. He's showing that his voice can really handle. You know, we know Dro can can vocalize. We know he can harmonize, but for some reason on this track. It was speaking to me differently. I'm not gonna lie. Next track here, we have Saba and No ID back in office now. Saba and No ID back together, making a banger, bro. This is a slapper. It's hard. It's not like this crazy lyrical shit, but it's in your face. Saba's rapping in your face. It's a little bit of a braggadocious track, and I like to hear that from Saba, especially linking back up with No ID. Kind of a crazy return. Not gonna lie. Next track here, we got Art by Fat Trail now. Come on, man. You know I've been I've been loving Fat Trell for a while now. I mean, not even just because the College Park shit. I mean, I've known about him for a long time. I'm not from the DMV, so I don't I don't have those ties to him like that, like a lot of people in that area do. But I've been fucking with it. I've been hearing super hard, super hard that street shit. Go fuck with that. Next track here we got "Put It On The Flow" by Lotto. This shit's crazy. I'm not gonna lie. This is one of my favorite tracks. This shit is crazy. She is snapping on this shit, dog. She's flowing on it. That beat is fucking like in your eardrums like fucking punching your eardrums it's just that hard the sample the loop on here is crazy i it's aggressive it's literally one of the most aggressive and one of my favorite songs she she snapped on this shit next we got leave her by lucky now this was a leak it's been out for a while i've heard this song so many fucking times but it's officially out and just hearing it out on our streaming platforms and just on Lucky's profile on my playlist is just nice because yo she else said i need her if you know the history Behind this song and where Lucky was, you know, he was dead broke, sleeping on the couch, making this song, addicted to all these fucking drugs, and just at pretty much his the bottom barrel for him. And he made this extremely artful song, and it's been on repeat. Next track here, Just Juice, Sweeter Scars, featuring Logic and Chippy Red. Now, Logic and Chippy Red on a song together? Interesting. It's definitely more Chippy Red inspired instrumental, if I will say. But Logic was rapping, rapping on this. He was. He had an incredible verse. The hook's pretty catchy, actually. Just she was kind of killed on the hook. I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't sure how I felt about it at first, but now I'm fucking with it a lot. You know, Logic, like I said, coming in with that fast flow, something that he's not really been doing recently. You know, people are gonna listen to this and think this is the only way Logic raps. It's not. But he came in with the fast flow, and then Chippy Red came in with the vocalizing harmonization on you know a beat that fits him perfectly i loved it bro i'm not gonna lie i've seen some hate for this song but i loved it i, I love seeing logic work with these younger artists you know we got that logic playboy cardi connect that i've been working on you know that shit that shit's i'm not gonna say too much but just know low low 88 saw that shit that's all i'm gonna say low 88 saw that shit and the last track i was playing a lot was tizo touchdowns five o'clock I didn't know Tizo Touchdown would rap like this. He let me know that I'm an idiot on Twitter, but I didn't, I didn't know he could rap like this. It's hard. There's a little switch in here where he goes into his more traditional singing, melodic style. And I love that part of the song too, but I can't lie, that first half of the song is what sold me. He's fucking, it's just hard, bro. He is, it's swaggy. He's talking his shit. He's just, he has that confidence and cadence that you want in a rapper making music like this. Tizo Touchdown's extremely talented and one of my favorite tracks of the month. But that's all the music I got. That is the monthly music highlights of April, 2023. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm gonna keep doing this every single month. You know, like I said, I retired the New Music Friday. I still do the New Music Friday playlist, which I post in my community tab. It's on my link tree. I post all over my social media, so just follow me on all my socials, you know what I'm saying? They're on the description, they're all linked down there. My TikTok, my Twitter, my Instagram, join the Discord, you know, get the New Music Friday playlist, you know, do all that shit. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss any videos, any updates, anything like that. And yeah, it's been Bryce. Peace. Don't with the hot shit, all they do is talk shit. You can never stop it, boy, just stop that. High end drug, call that HD vision. All these other motherfuckers full of indecision. These are going through your city like drug money. Made a meal off rap, fuck drug money. And now you hit me like I got you whatever you need. But deep down, deep down, I'm a motherfucker.